Well, hello there, friendos. How are we doing today? I hope to God that you're all doing absolutely wonderful. Welcome back to Cat Sermons. Here I am in a beautiful cosmic looking place. It's actually not that far from where we did the last one, but man, I gotta say, just wandering around down here, I really like it down here. It is, it is so pretty and it is so wonderful and it reminds me of the beautiful cosmos that we all get to live in and that we all get to share and we get to share um you know the stars in the night sky and we all get to share this wonderful earth and you know sometimes uh things aren't going the bestest for us in our lives but ultimately we still get to share this and we still get to have people around with us and you know if things aren't going great for you I want you to really uh, think about something that you would like help with in your life right now as we're about to do our little prayer. And I want you to think that the Divine Mother is listening because she is and she's great like that. And, you know, if you really want some help from her, uh, ask her for some help and mean it when you ask her for some help. And... You know, open your heart up to the possibility of her help. You never know. Sometimes she'll help us in ways that we never expected. Rather than maybe completely changing the situation, maybe she gives us the insight to look at a situation in a new way. Or maybe new opportunities will open up. Sometimes all kinds of crazy things can happen. You know what I mean, Jimmy Dean? So we're going to focus on that big scary building up there, which is not actually scary. It's actually very pretty. But we're going to focus on that, and that's we're going to form a little ring, and we're going to start the prayer. Oh, sweet divine mother, please hear our prayer. Please guide us so that we may be instruments of your will, so that we can be instruments of mercy, so that the seeds of mercy may bloom in our hearts. Oh, sweet mother, Help us with our daily tasks and help us so that we can get closer to you and so that we can represent you on this earth. Oh, sweet Divine Mother, please guide us. Guide us from the unreal to the real. Guide us from darkness unto light and guide us from death to immortality. Please, Divine Mother, guide us so that we may each walk the path of mercy and love. Guide us so that we may each embrace love within ourselves and bring that love out to others around us. And sweet Divine Mother, please guide us so that we may always have you in our minds. Om, peace, peace, peace. Isn't it wonderful? I think it's wonderful. And that's pretty cool. You know, this might be a little bit of a shorter one today. But I just wanted to share some thoughts that have been on my kitty cat mind. You know... There's a wonderful plurality of spirituality out there in the world. Some of us are Christians, some of us are Muslims, some of us are Hindus, Buddhists, etc. And there's all kinds of different paths out there for all kinds of different people. I think that we can each find a path that will fit us and help us in our daily lives. And that we don't have to worry too much about any one path being the absolute truth. We just have to worry about paths giving us the light and the hope that we need and the strength that we need in our daily lives. And we need to rely on the Divine Mother to give us a little bit of help. And you know, sometimes we are having a hard time, but the Divine Mother is always there and she's always listening. I want you to think about that. She'll always listen to you if you pour your hat part out. I almost said your hat. If you pour your hat of emotions out onto her, sometimes known as a heart, <laughs> she'll always listen and she'll give help, often in unexpected ways. I've learned over the years that it's always a good thing to accept the gifts that Ma Kali gives me and that it's always good to try and call back and see when I've made mistakes and when I can improve and find the blessings in everyday existence and find the blessings in everything around me sometimes you just really need to open up your heart and try to be as grateful as possible i'm very lucky i get to be a cute little kitty i get to come here and have these little sermons i get to talk to some of y'all and i get to try and impart some good words 
and good thoughts onto you. And hopefully it's helpful. And, you know, I find that I get closer to God by doing these things. And by coming in here and just really trying to give a decent sermon, I'm also very grateful because I have a wonderful puppy who loves to be pet and also loves it when I give her little bits of peanut butter. She uh, always uh, smacks her lips and goes, I'm, 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 I'm going to do it. And that's always kind of fun. And, you know, there's lots of wonderful things that we get to experience. And there are those in our lives who are not experiencing all the wonderful things. And sometimes they experience bad things. Sometimes we experience bad things. But with the right attitude and the right understanding, we can know that those bad things are temporary and that we can get past them. And that with the love of God in our hearts, we can always be doing better and can always be a light and a beacon onto the world rather than simply, you know, wallowing in misery. And, you know, she, our sweet mother, is always there and always willing to listen. And, you know, whether you call our mother, you know, God or Allah, Brahman, Shiva, Vishnu, Kali, whatever... She's always there and she's always willing to listen to us and she's always willing to lend us a hand. We just have to be willing to accept that hand. Hey, sometimes you're going to need help in this life. Sometimes you're going to find that you're the help that someone else needs. And one of the great joys in being on a spiritual path is realizing the wonder of helping others and how much it can help yourself as well. And how much... Just being a part of this greater community, we're all like little tiny stars in the cosmos. Some of us feel like we're going to burn out and sometimes we need a little bit of help. And you know, one of the best spiritual practices is to give up your actions to help someone else. To not like hold them to like, oh, you're going to pay me back later, but to be as selfless as possible and to give as much help and as much love as possible. That's something that we can all do. And you know... Sometimes it's as simple as a kind word, checking in on the people around you, checking in on people who aren't having the greatest time. Oh, I accidentally tapped a button. Sometimes it's as simple as punching Satan. But, um, you know, you don't need to necessarily punch Satan. Maybe Satan just needs a hug. You never know. I feel like a lot of us can do very good things by simply being positive. Now, of course, I understand that there is such a thing as toxic positivity, where you're just positive no matter what, and you just kind of ignore everything going on around you, or you try to force positivity on the other people. That's not what you should do. You should try to find the peace within yourself. You should try to connect to that inner uh, glory of God, you know, the inner glory of the great being behind all things and within all things, and see that light shining through all of reality, even in the parts that we think are dark, and trying to embrace that, and trying to remember that there's always light, even in some of the darkest actions. There's often, you know, misunderstanding, and there's some ignorance out there, but ultimately, all things will come back to the Lord in the end, and are of the Lord now. Sometimes we just have, need the right lens to see it. You know, like when you're like examining a jewel and you got a big cool jewel and you're like, wow, that's a cool jewel, but I need to see if there's any scratches on it. You don't use your regular eyeballs. You got to get the big old magnifying lenses out. Not a mean, Jimmy Dean. And sometimes rather than seeing scratches, though, you won't appreciate the true wondrous beauty of the gym until you put on the right lens and sometimes that's just all that we need to do when we're walking around in the world you know it's simply a matter of perspective and we can learn uh how to be in the right perspective and the might and the the right mindset to always be on top of things and to, you know, understand the way the world is and to not be so attached to results or things like that. To give up our actions to God 
ultimately as renounce everything and give it all to God. Bring everything and make everything an act of devotion. Make it so your every step in the world is an act of devotion. And that might sound very lofty, but I get closer and closer to that all the time. Heck, when I paint my little Warhammer figurines, I do it for Makali. When I play Elden Ring and just run around and do whatever, you know, fight bosses or whatever, I do that for Makali too. And you know, sometimes it's as simple as just uh, finding a quiet place where you can be alone which is you and God, and just kind of pouring your heart out and talking to God, saying, you know, God, this was really bothering me today, and I I really want some help with that. Or, you know, maybe saying, you know, God, I don't know how I'm supposed to deal with this. And sometimes just talking it out, you'll find that Ma Callie will give answers in ways that you never, ever expected. She's really wonderful like that. She's always giving us fun little things and also making our lives interesting and sometimes our lives will get real hectic and chaotic and we won't know quite how to react to them i understand that and i'm not saying that everything is always you know per sheer perfection but with the right lens we can find that even the most difficult problems we can deal with and we can get past so that we're not um overwhelmed by them and you know if we are getting overwhelmed by them we can offer ourselves up to god and, you know, we can find that our minds can be stilled. Like, if you can just take a little bit of time each day to focus on God, just like 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so, I would say even five minutes or even just a, even just a few moments to focus on God and refocus your mind and refocus yourself to trying to get closer to God and trying to understand the beauty and the complexity around you and trying to get yourself into the right mindset that's quite possible and it's quite healthy to do sometimes you know as i'm walking around i'll just take a little moment to just reorient myself and make sure i'm doing things for god and that i'm trying to embrace god in my every action and every moment and trying to live up to the standards that i have set myself as i think that they will get me closer to god and you know using my pleasures and the nice things in life to get closer to God and using those as tools to make it so that I can get to the greatest pleasure of all, which is, you know, connection with God or connection. Why not? Why not go out of your way to find the joys and the pleasant things in life? Why not change your viewpoints? Why not look at all of this and try to see what's going on out there? You know, I was reading a little bit about the Stoic philosophy. I've always liked Marcus Aurelius and the meditations. I can't say I'm super well read on other Stoic philosophy. I've read a little bit, but not anywhere near as much. I mostly focused on Marcus Aurelius and his meditations because I find it very practical. And, you know, there's always that old Stoic adage about uh, focusing on what you can control and not um, worrying about what you can't control. What you can control is the way you approach the world and the way you look at things. You can see yourself when you're being overly negative and try to correct it. You can also see when thoughts are going through your head and you don't have to connect them. You don't always have to let every thought spiral out of control because that's something that a lot of people do. You don't have to take ownership of every single thought and say, oh man, I'm so rotten for having that bad thought. You don't have to do any of that. There's a wonderful, beautiful world out here and Ma Kali is here answering prayers and there's all kinds of different ways you can approach her and there's all kinds of different ways you can approach God. You should find your own ways to approach God and get close to God and you should find as much peace as you possibly can. Change the way you look at the world and change the way you look at things and always try to remember that we're all connected and we're all part of one great mind, one great consciousness that is Brahman, that is God. You know, I think that's well worth doing. So yeah, it'll be a little bit of a shorter one today, but I just wanted to share those thoughts. So we'll end with a little prayer. Oh, sweet God, please guide us. Guide us from the unreal to the real. Guide us from darkness unto light. Guide us from death to immortality. Oh, sweet God, protect everyone who sees this video and everyone in the world. Help us all get closer to you and bring us all further along the journey. Thank you, God, for everything you've given us. Thank you for the sweetness 
of your own name and thank you for the sweetness of the world. Thank you for the chirping of the birds. Thank you for all the lovely things we get to be out here. Thank you for letting me be a lovely cat. And I hope that all of the people who see this have something lovely and grateful that there are something lovely that they are grateful for in their lives. Thank you, Makali, for everything you've given us. Om Kri Makali Kali Namaha. Thank you, God, for everything. Okay. So now with that, I will say I hope that you all have an absolutely wonderful day and can all find the blessings in your life and all, you know, can have your hearts uplifted and your minds uplifted to the joys of God. Thank you. Bye-bye. And God bless.